Good morning folks. It's eerily quiet in here which is strange because it's still super hot. Come in this morning it's 21 degrees. So I need an espresso shot to kind of wake me up a little bit. Last night was a tough night. Oh the heat. It was unbelievable. And then we had a super massive storm which woke us all up about 3 in the morning. But we're here anyway. Bright. Not quite. Early. Not quite. But we are here. Uh, so I'm going to have to today wrestle with, I'm looking at it because I don't want to do it. I'm going to have to wrestle with that freaking insulation down there. And we're going to have to get that on those tanks. And whilst it's fresh in my mind, I've also had a think about the blankets, the heating blankets. I'll just bring you across. So this is how they're positioned kind of on the other three fermenters which are behind you. But I'm thinking up here, of course, that's all wasted energy because that's not going to transfer into the beer. The beer is going to be sort of this high, maybe this maximum. So we want to ideally concentrate all the heating capacity, you would have thought, like that in the bottom half of the tank so I know it says not to fold these blankets but it's not like we're using them normally is it so that to me would make more sense because they're not wasting any heating capacity up the top so I think I'm going to go and do that with the others in the corner here we've got the connector that goes onto the control unit which I will keep in We'll just have it set to maximum. I don't think these have an inbuilt thermostat, though I could be wrong because there's one, two, three, four, five pins in there. So maybe they do. I think a little bit more exploratory surgery might be in order uh, to figure out exactly how these work to make sure that they are on. They should be on in the winter anyway, shouldn't they? But we don't really need the thermostat in there, do we? I'm not sure, maybe there's a thermal cutout which prevents overheating or if there's a short circuit. Either way, it's these little controllers that do the magic. So they're only 70 watt blankets, but that's enough to keep the chill off in winter. And as you can see, there are three settings on here. And I normally just leave it on number three, which is max, and then cut the plug off and wire it straight into a relay, which is controlled by the STC which is controlled by the brewery temperature controllers so yeah I do want to have another look inside one of these and just figure out exactly what circuitry is doing what but I have a funny feeling that there's got to be some type of feedback because if you look at that it's a five pin connector so you definitely imagine that it was doing some type of sensing otherwise what are the other two pins for I'm guessing that you've got live neutral and earth and I'd imagine that it is earthed because it's not a double insulated product so anyway I'm waffling I think I'm just going to explore and figure out what these are before we decide how to wire them up and the fact that the coolers come on is maybe the cue to cut <laughs> oh god help me now folks this is a job that I do not want to do but I have to come on then Lofto Lofto 3000 Loft insulation just pull that up here a sec oh it's sticking to the floor there we go So this has to be now cut and wrapped around the tanks. Thankfully it comes with these convenient slices in it so I just pull strips off as we go. But totally not looking forward to this folks. Right so we've cut all the uh, insulation into one meter sections 
but there are a few things on here I'm just gonna have to get rid of like these handles for instance they're not gonna work with the timber cladding they will be in the way unfortunately so I'm gonna have to go and pick up a few slitting discs because I've used all mine and we're just gonna zip all this stuff off it's not needed frankly so we can get rid of it and then it's a bit of a tight squeeze below these boards for the insulation but of course I can't bring it out any further because I only have 30 mil to play with on this section here 30 to 40 mil so we're just going to have to grin and bear it and squeeze the insulation underneath it's not too bad all the way around like some places like where the cooling panel is we may just have to undo the screws and periodically work around uh, instead of pushing it under just ping these off and maybe do it that way I don't know yet we'll see but uh, I'm gonna go and nip up to screw fix and pick up some slitting discs so we can get these bad boys off was a lot easier than anticipated folks we've got a little bit left down there and some off cuts down here because I've trimmed all the skirts if you like level so the timber is going to finish at the cone and then underneath we're going to take the same approach as we have done on these tanks and insulate it with this sticky back foam which seems to work well that's the first time I've seen any of it coming away actually so yeah all these tanks are done we'll just put a few little bits of those off cuts up here when we actually come around to, to uh, cladding it with timber but I think that they look spot on so we just need to go and find some timber now and then once they're clad then we're going to basically just have a replica of that over here and that will really set the brewery off I think so while I'm uh, just waiting for Stu, I think what we'll do is just give you a bit of an update on the beer garden, particularly the hops. Would you look at them? So I actually never anticipated them to climb all the way up to that top wire that I've put up there, which is, you know, it's really quite high up that is it's above the window the upstairs window of the pub so that vine has done really well actually and we've got some hanging baskets and herbs and everything else still to go up but that's a job that's one of the many jobs that we've got on the list oregano's flowering look at that it looks lovely doesn't it and then uh, in the garden as you can see everything's really set off quite nicely the pansies are putting in a second show We've got whatever these were called up and flowering. These look pretty as well. And Stuart's been in with some stakes and uh, staked quite a few of the taller flowers up because they kind of wanted to fall over. That's lovely, isn't it? And uh, well, everything's starting to take shape. We still, of course, do need to come out and uh, just touch up the bolts on the uh, fencing we've got a spider tagging the wall there a little bit and then of course we've got to also make the pier caps they're still uh, still on the list we've not got them done yet but it's looking pretty smart don't you think folks I think so too and when that canopy is out it casts a beautiful bit of shade in fact shall we see if we can pull it out I don't know if the camera will stand up on its own at the minute because we don't have the tripod.
isn't that just lovely? Spot on, I reckon. Alright, that's ready for opening up. It does work a bloody treat, doesn't it? So I've quickly knocked another job off the list. We got those baskets up. There we go, that's made a difference. Gave them a good, good soaking with water. And it's really starting to turn this into quite a pleasant space to be in now, isn't it? Hey buddy. Hey, we've got another job for you. What's that? Um, so this is the third and final maxi chiller that I'm going to be modifying and all the others have had solid surrounds this one is perforated as you can see all the way around so I thought what I'd do is film the whole process of modifying this all I've done effectively already is rip out all of the thermostats that were in here and any other ancillary electricals so we've just got the cable looms as I put this together I'll explain what they are if you want to stick around for this section of the video it might be tedious a little bit but we'll do the full install if not you can just skip forward five or six minutes and uh, you'll see the finished article but here we go folks so just to give you a quick recap we've got the lid off the top of the maxi chiller we've taken out the cooling coils and any other electricals we've just left all the looms all the cables in there so all we have left is the compressor, the fan, the heat exchanger and the cooling coils. That's going to be full of glycol. We're going to put a separate pump in there when we get round to installing it. And right now we're bypassing the compressor and installing an STC 1000. So I've marked out what I need to cut out on here. And it's basically just like five of these perforations. So let's go ahead and do that. Normally, I'd recommend moving, removing the side panel, but just for ease of access there, I've just gone ahead and done it that way because it saves me holding it. I just need to trim these back a touch and uh, we'll be ready to install the STC and then I'll pull this front panel off. So of course I'm not concerned here at all about hitting any of the pipe work because I can see it all straight behind behind the unit, behind these perforations. So all I'm doing now is removing these six or seven screws. Might be a bit quicker if I just use the cordless. And this will then allow me access to the electrics on the other side of the panel and allow us to wire in the STC so while that's off I'm going to take the STC I'm going to mount it on its side so it's the same as the other ones that I've just done it's a little bit tight let me just I'm just going to force it in there I'm not overly concerned about Scratching it, oh, it really won't go. Let me just trim this back again. It's going to be a pain in the arse, isn't it? Because I said I'd bring you along for the journey. Right. Right, 
as I say, third time's a charm. There we go, she's in. So I'm just gonna position this and drop in the clips on the back, which will hold the STC in position while we work on it. I know I'm just off shot here, but all I'm putting in are these little slidey clips, look. And then we're gonna push that up tight. And that is good enough for what we're doing here today. So now I'm just gonna shove the whole unit to the back a little bit. And I'm gonna prop this section underneath it like that and get rid of these bits of metal that we've just cut out. They're the little fin sections that was removed. Right then, just reposition the camera and there we go, we'll get to work. So, one of the first, first things I want to do is separate and identify all the cables that we've got on this loom here. So that is my power in. So we've got live, neutral and earth. That's perfect, we can reuse that. And on this side here, we've got uh, some more thermostat cables, which we're not going to need. That is the live and neutral for the pump. And this here is the live and neutral for the cooling fan. That one was temperature control loom. Don't need that. So first thing first, we need to get all of our power and neutral cables in onto some type of buzz bar. So what we're going to do is just strip all three of these cables back so we can utilize the existing plug. Then what I like to do is twist the strands and then fold them over to give us a nice big thick piece of copper for the grub screw in this terminal block to grab hold of and we're going to wind out these three sections on the terminal block these three grub screws and pop in our mains feed so what I like to do is put the earth in the middle and then it gives us a bit of a gap between the live and the neutral should you accidentally get any stray strands kind of poking out the side of the terminal very rarely happens but it's just another layer of protection that is probably overkill but something that I like to do I do the same thing when wiring plugs I always like to twist the strands and double them over to give me something for the grub screws to actually grab hold of so there we go that's our mains in so that cable is a little bit long I'm going to try and wiggle out there we go and I should just be able to feed some of this cable back through the bulkhead fitting on the side here and just to take up a bit of that slack because there's too much there on the inside I could of course cut it back and strip it but if I can slide it through that's the easiest option right next we need to have the fan cable which uh, they've been kind enough to provide us with an earth there we go it's got some shielding on there which quite frankly I don't really think we're gonna need all of that so let's just strip some of this back to expose some of the wires there we go ah that's lovely right so with this being a an AC fan it doesn't matter which polarity you put these terminals in and this earth that they provided quite handily 
gives us a route to ground. So what we'll do is take that earth wire, strip it back, and then we'll pop that in the center of our main zin. And then that is all we're gonna have to do in terms of earthing the appliance. You can of course take a multimeter to this as well and test it for continuity. But I can see, looking back here, that it is actually terminated on the uh, on the chassis. So these two sections are our live and neutral. We're going to need a neutral to the STC 1000. So we'll pop that in now. So we're just taking a piece of blue wire, stuck it in one of the AC terminals of the STC and then I'm just going to go ahead, clip it, take one of these terminals as well off the fan, we'll strip them both at least 10 millimeters of wire exposed, twist them together and then what we're going to do is plug these two fellas together into our neutral terminal on the on the terminal block and then we have the neutral for the uh, oh I also need the pump neutral in there come to think of it so let me just trim some of this back almost forgot an important part of the procedure so all the neutrals on the whole system can be common together it doesn't matter about separating them out so what I'm going to do with this one is just get myself a decent length so I can kind of tie it into that section there strip that back pick up the uh, screwdriver that knocks on the floor and we'll pull these two neutrals back out again and uh, oh, we'll put the third one in with it as well so if you think if you're not happy about putting three cables into one terminal block like that then you can go ahead and add more jumper cables or even put one of the Wago connectors in there but I'm pretty confident that that ain't going anywhere and then also what we have to do now is we could if we wanted put this live into uh, this earth in there as well which I might just do because it's there so we may as well utilize it have a look at gift us in the mouth as they say so let's get that earth out now when I'm putting two or three more two, three or more cables into a terminal block, then I tend not to double them over but just twist them together. So there we go. We've got an earth, two chassis earths now. Next we need a live for the pump. So this is the live for the pump. We don't want to be putting that into the terminal block, but instead we want to be putting that on the relay output on the cooling side of the STC which is just there so we'll just put that in tighten that up right then that's not tightened up that was already closed let's try again There we go, that's got it that time. And then we need to send some live cabling. I may as well use this little bit of red cable that's sitting there. We'll send this into the input side of the cooling relay on the STC 1000. So we've got an in and out 
that's out to the pump, that's in. And come to think of it folks, we could also do with having the fan come on at the same time. So what we'll do is we'll just pull this live back out. See on the other unit that I've just finished, it actually had already these sections were connected further down the loop but we're having to join these together here so now we're going to have the fan and the compressor coming out of the STC 1000 relay so when the compressor turns on the cooling fan will turn on and then finally we need to grab another red cable this will do you could use brown it's just I'm using up the spare cable that we've got knocking around here and uh, that is going to be my live feed to supply the STC which will go into there and then that will tie in to the input side of the relay and of course the mains in so those three are now common together and we'll just stick that in there tighten that down so that might have been a little bit complicated to follow because I flew through it effectively but if you're not too sure, you shouldn't really be wiring up an STC to be honest. Uh, but, well there you go. So, with this as well, what I like to do, now we've got all these wires hanging around all over the place. I like to kind of coil them up together so that there's no strain on them at all. And just pop a tie wrap around them to hold that lot in place and then we'll pop a tie wrap around all this lot as well just to hold all that lot together making sure there's no unnecessary strain on anything which there doesn't seem to be and then finally we're going to take our probe we're going to send that to the cold bath to the ice bath over there and last but not least we'll connect that up to the sensor outputs on the STC wind them in just like so they look good to me and then I also like to just tie off any excess from the probe. We'll leave a little bit in there. I'll just kind of loop it around the hand like that, making sure we've got enough. And then I'll tie that with a tie wrap to the cables that we've already got wrapped up zip him in and then if I position this right we should be able to lift this close everything up and the STC should not be fouling any surfaces we'll stick the screws back in or at least I'll attempt to one at a time, corner to corner oh yeah, it's the wrong bit for the screws here but I'm sure I can back on there's that one put this bad boy in three and four 
one in the center. And one either side in the middle. And then for the big switch on. This is when the electric trips. There we go. Just like that. So what I like to do now, uh, just so we're prepared for the next time we turn this machine on, and I'll press and hold the set button, and then I'm gonna go up to F3, and I'm gonna turn the pump delay to five minutes. We'll press the start button to lock that in. And then I'm gonna press and hold the set button again. And then under F1, we're gonna press the set button, and we're gonna scroll down to a negative temperature where we can fill it up with glycol and set this thing running in a few days time when we've got all the cables and the tanks finished. So I think minus five's good. Press the power button again to lock that in. And that's it folks, all done. That's how to rewire a Maxi 310 chiller with an STC 1000. Right folks. I'm bringing you out to where I've got this cooler stationed. It's uh, been rigged up now, so we've got a pump in there. This is a pump that came with a cooler, I managed to get it working again. If Michael's watching you might remember it wasn't exactly uh, spinning when we got it, but I've managed to recon it and it works. And uh, basically all I've done is hook the pump supply onto this connector which now goes via our control boxes these are the brewery temp control boxes so it's just a simple case of hooking these two together like back to the future and when I turn this on now this should turn on and then when this wants some cold this should turn on so I'm going to stand everything up so we can kind of see it on the side here, maybe, maybe I'll put it on the other side. Yeah, don't do that and we in uh, overflow pipe all over the bloody tape measure and whatnot. Anyway, I'll reposition this, we'll get it plugged in, because it's got a five minute delay on this machine that I, you saw me set earlier on, we'll time that five minute delay out and then we'll also watch what is happening with the control unit because this is what should kick on the reset pump and then in order to see if it's actually working I've just set up this little this is the flow and this is the return so imagine that's connected to a fermenter so we should see liquid flowing through there but frankly if the pump's spinning liquid's flowing right, I'll get a set up right we're around at the other side now so we can see the STC on the system, the STC on the control unit, even though that's on its side and that one's upside down. And then I've brought in uh, a meter to measure the current that this whole thing is going to draw. So we'll be able to see what power it uses when it's at idle, what power it uses when the compress is on, and what power it uses when the pump's on. So let's just plug this in, there we go, that's a good start, everything's lit up. So at the minute we're using 0 0.15 amps, that's 150 milliamp, which is effectively nothing. Oh no, it's 0 0.015, it's 15 milliamps. So that that is nothing that's basically just powering the displays on the stcs nothing else is happening so now we've got a five minute wait for the compressor to kick in and then when that turns on the compressor will kick in and the fan will kick in but having said that this box may turn on before then so we'll be able to see yeah this will come on two minutes beforehand so we'll be able to see what kind of current the recirculation pump's gonna draw as well. So if we write these things down, 
15 milliamps on idle and then we'll also figure out what current that's going to take and then what current these two items in here are going to take. We'll come back when something happens. Okay folks, so the STC on the Brory control has turned on and that's turned on the reset pump and indeed water is flowing around the loop and we've jumped up to 360 milliamps so we've got 15 milliamp idle and then we've got 360 milliamp uh, pump and then we'll see what this chiller will total so we know that the pump is running at uh, 345 so we can deduce exactly what everything should be ticking along at oh, actually it's it's dropped by five milliamps now must be settling into its into its motion so uh, there we go, oh, it's back up to 360, it seems to be bouncing on that. Anyway, we'll come back when this cooling system turns on. As you can see, at the moment it's sitting at 28 degrees. Let's see how quickly that comes down when the cooler turns on, providing everything that we've done to this cooler means we haven't damaged it. And there we go, I managed to catch it on camera. So the fan's on and the compressor's on and now we're up to 1.65 kilowatts, you can just see that there, uh, then 2.15 kilowatts, so that must be the pump, the compressor kicking in properly. So the total chiller is 2, 1, 30 milliamps or 2.13 kilowatts if you like and then I'm thinking as well because there must be a delay on that uh, compressor so if we have 1600 then that must be pulling oh, I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong I'm, I'm looking too far into this anyway let's watch this temperature come down I'll give it five minutes we're ticking at 2.15 kilowatts. We'll give it five minutes, we'll come back and see what we get on here. Right, it's been a couple of minutes and we're down from 28 to 25 degrees, which isn't bad in this heat, frankly. Uh, I just want to make a quick correction. When I was talking about the numbers that we're recording here, I think I said 2.13 kilowatts. Uh, well, actually it'd be 2.13 amperes. 2000 milliamps is 2 amperes, of course. Uh, tripping over myself. Often happens. Don't take what I say for verbatim, though. That's the key. As you can see as well now, looking at this temperature, we're starting to tick down nicely. I reckon another five minutes, and that water will be sufficiently chilled. Well, 22.4, she's coming down, 22.3, you know, it's ticking down really quite quickly, I've got to give it its dues, and we're up to 2.6 amps almost now, but I'm going to call it a day folks, because it's getting on to 6.30, and quite frankly, I'd like to go home today. So we've had a really productive day actually. Uh, I got a lot more done than I anticipated. We've actually got all of these fermenters now insulated, just waiting for match boarding. We've been out of course to the wood yard, but unfortunately, alas, there was no timber. We've got STCs on three of these cooling units now. This one's wired up, ready to go. We've just got to do exactly the same to this one and this one over here. This big boy though will be controlling three fermenters and these will be doing one each. So we've got a little bit of redundancy in the setup 
if anything fails and in this heat it's likely to. As you can see our normal chiller over here at the moment is sitting at 3.2 degrees or minus, minus 3.2 degrees whilst all the fermenters call for cold and that normally sits at minus 11 so you can see that there's a real tug on, on all of the systems today and I'm just looking up behind me at the cold rooms they're experiencing the same problem 13.6 degrees I mean that's a good storage temperature for the beer but it would be nice to have those a couple of degrees colder and if we come into the dark and dingy corner where I usually end my vlogs funnily enough you can see that our classic 1000 cooler is managing to get its reservoir down to 3.2 degrees C but not any lower of course and one of the reasons why it's not any lower is because it's not set to go any lower uh, because we don't have any glycol in there yet we do have the glycol though that's sat here in tanks just waiting to be decanted into the systems but I'm not going to do that until we know all the systems are working seamlessly and we're not going to end up with any leaks on the floor because it's expensive stuff is monoprop glycol so that's it folks as you can see I'm sweating out of every orifice and it is still an absolute scorcher out here so I'm going to wrap up and we're going to go home. We'll see you tomorrow.